Yes, praise the Lord, people of God. It's a season of lifting. It's a time of total recovery. It's a season where God has proposed to deliberately raise people and take them to the next level. And I want to encourage you, my listeners, to forget about the troubles of the first six months. Yes, January through June came with its own troubles. But to God be the glory, we have survived by the grace of God. Welcome to your season of lifting. I have the mandate of God to speak to you today from Psalm number 40, verses 1 to 3. But I'll pay closer attention to verse 2 of that Psalm number 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me from the pit of destruction out of the mary block and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. Praise God. Season of lifting. He drew me from the pit of destruction out of the miry bone and set my feet upon a rock. Let me assure you that God's purposeful declaration for us in the month of July is that we are lifted. We are lifted from the horrible pit we have dwelt before now. We are lifted from being entrenched in miry clay. We are lifted from being drowned in the well of pain, regret, and depression. God is delighted to lift us from the pit and fill our hearts with abundant joy. But you know, as the Lord has proposed to lift us this season, especially this second half of the year, one thing we must do at this half-time break, knowing fully well that the scoreline of any football tournament can be turned around in the second half. As we begin the second half of the year, prepare, make up your mind that you are going to win, you are going to be victorious. But at this half-time break, you would need to ask yourself, the fundamental question what did I do well in the first half what didn't I do sufficiently well and how can I make the second half even better the first question I want to ask you and I want you to answer listen to me as I provide guidance is how did we get into the pit in the first instance looking through the first six months of the year how did we get into the pit if the Lord has said he would deliver he will lift us from the pit it means that many are actually in the pit of destruction number one is that a lot of people got into the pit by the enemy's plot, by the evil machination of the enemy. The enemy said I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will drag them into the horrible pit. Exodus chapter 15 verse 9. Many have found themselves in the pit through the enemy's plot. But you know we can rejoice because the same Exodus chapter 15 verse 6 says, your right hand and O Lord, your right hand, O glorious Redeemer, glorious in power, your right hand shatters the enemy. He is the Lord of war. You know, friends and allies at times may become enemies. They may become wolves in sheep's clothing. Friends may become foes because of your dream. You know, this is what happened in Joseph's case. Joseph got enemies from among his siblings because of his great glory and the dream that he had. You got into the pit because you shared your dream with wolves in sheep's clothing like the innocent Joseph did. Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and throw him into one of these pits. Genesis chapter 37 verse 19. Let me say to you that the scariest thing for your enemy, what the enemy detests or hates most, is not your fashion sense, it's not your physical frame, it's not how well built you are. The enemy is scared of your vision. What scares the enemy most is your your vision and not your physicality. We will see what will become of his dream. Genesis chapter 37 verse 20. But despite the enemy's machination and evil design, here is the word of God for someone in the month of July. In Job chapter 5 verse 12, the word of God says, God the Almighty has disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands can no longer perform their enterprise. He has frustrated their evil plans. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two reason why many got into the pit in the first instance is because they were given to deceit and they lie against the Holy Ghost, against the Holy Spirit. Your sin will not only find you out, my brothers and my sisters. Your sin will sink you in the horrible pit, in the pit of regret, in the pit of depression, in the pit of agony of life. This is true of Ananias and Sapphire. In Acts of Apostles chapter 5 from verse 1, when Apostle Peter challenged 
challenged and confronted them with the truth. They gave up the ghost immediately because the truth is all powerful and has capacity to cripple those who are deceitful. Sin against the Holy Spirit. What a terrible thing to be caged in. The sin against the Holy Spirit. Number three thing is carelessness. Many have found themselves in the pit because of carelessness. I guess Sarah Psalm 39 verses 1 to 2 says, I will guard my ways and my tongue before my enemies who surround me every day. One thing the enemy wants to do is for you to make his wrong statement. It's for you to tell lie. It's for you to be deceitful. And the enemy, the accuser, can hold that against you. You must be careful in the second half of the year. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 4 says, If a man swears thoughtlessly or carelessly, he will be guilty. Don't allow the pit of guilt to swallow you in the second half of the year. I want to say to you, reminding you of the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12 verse 36. You will account my brothers and sisters for every careless word you utter. You know when somebody is in the pit, I want you to have an imagination of what it looks like and I ask that by the grace of God you will not be found in the pit this month and beyond in the name of Jesus Christ. What does it look like in the mud? What does it look like in the miry clay? Number one, in the miry clay, in the muddy ground, speed is slowed down. The capacity to advance is slowed down. You have to be struggling to get out of that muddy clay. Many people are strugglers today because they have found themselves in the pit, the horrible pit of life. And God is saying, I will double your speed in the name of Jesus Christ. What does it look like in the mall. Efforts to advance are deployed first into rescue. The first thing you want to do first is to be rescued before you even think of advancement. But God is saying not only will you be rescued, it will grant you lifting and speedy advancement in the name of Jesus Christ. The other thing that uh, being in the mall looks like is that you must know that my clay stains and makes dirty. If somebody is in the mall, you are dirty. You are stained. And that wastes your efforts by first making efforts to wash yourself clean. The efforts that should have been deployed into productive things are first used to clean oneself. And you know, the associated problems of being in the mud, you are now surrounded, you are not even sure whether the helpers are really helpers or exploiters. You are not even sure that whether those who promise to lift you out are indeed genuine. No wonder many in the pit of life have been taken away, overtaken by alcoholism. They have been taken away by terrible friends who advise them about terrible things. They have been surrounded by jesters who are not serious, who give in to substance abuse and they do a lot of funny things. But you know, let me assure you that there is a way out for you. Number one way out is in Acts of Apostles chapter 3 verse 19 so that God, as he has promised, will rescue you and lift you up. Number one is to repent from your sins and turn away from your transgression. And then the Bible says, and a time of refreshing will come from the Father. I can assure you that a time of lifting his air. If you will repent from your sin, wherever you are listening to me from, if you repent from your sin from today and turn back completely, never to go back there, a time of refreshing will surely come to you. Number two is to humble yourself. Many people have been where they are unlifted. They have been where they are stagnated because they are proud in their hearts and proud people cannot be lifted by God. Humble yourself and be lifted by Jehovah. Remember James chapter 4 verse 10 says, God will lift the humble, but it will bring down the proud. Number three thing you must do, having repented and having humbled yourself before our God, is to hold on to God's word. Hold on to the word of God for lifting. I can assure you again that God is excited to lift you up and to raise you from the pit of destruction. Hold on to this word. Hold on to the word of God. Write these words down in Psalm 145 verse 14. There is a word for somebody there in the academic that is listening to me. There is a word for somebody there in the university. God is saying, The Lord upholds all who are falling and he lifts up all who are bowed down. Are you bowed down in your heart? Are you depressed? God is excited and delighted to lift you in the month of July. Number two, that you must hold on, hold on to the word of God. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 49 says, He lifts up those who are encompassed by their enemies. God is going to lift you up. It doesn't matter company of enemies that are surrounding you. It doesn't matter their number because those who are with you are more than they that are with them. That is the word of God. Number three, word of God you must hold on to for July and for the rest of this year is Psalm 3 verse 3. My shield and my
my buckler is my gold. God is my shield and my glory and he is the lifter of my head. If you can believe and agree with me that God is the lifter of your head, he will come to you as you humble yourself. He will come to you as you repent. He will come to you as you will make a room in your heart for the reign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If anyone hasn't confessed Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, this word is not for you. This is a word for kingdom people. Those who have been registered, who have been enlisted in the company, in the kingdom of God. If you have been enlisted, if your name has been written in the book of life, I congratulate you. But if not, here is an opportunity to be enlisted, to be enrolled in the kingdom of our Father in heaven. Just put your right hand upon your chest wherever you are and declare that Lord Jesus, I confess that you are the Lord and Savior of the world. And because of me, you came, you were crucified and you died. And on the third day, you rose again. Therefore, I believe in you as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life and let my name be deleted from the kingdom of destruction. Let my name be deleted from hellfire as I rejoice in salvation. If you have done that, I congratulate you. I may the Lord give you reasons to rejoice this month and beyond in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.